Hi everyone, and thanks Jenna for partnering on with me on this slightly exciting uh, session. Would love to provide a glimpse into how I am taking notes and I'm using Airtable uh, to organize them and to distill them and to connect the dots with them. I guess the key thing to underline here is, um, as Jenna mentioned, on a daily basis, we get gigabytes of data um, gigabytes of information flowing through us. Not that everything is relevant, but it is important that for relevant things, even if they are remotely relevant or they will be relevant only in the long term, that we are able to hold on to them and we are able to create connections to them. That is at least my objective in coming up with a structure to document and organize my notes, um, because my belief is creativity is really just connecting things, um, creating connections in novel ways. So in ways that were never created before. And if you are able to do it, I think that's what uh, we contribute to the world by inventing and innovating and solving problems by combining ideas, disciplines, approaches, solutions um, that weren't approached in the same way before. So in order to do that about three years ago, I started um, following up with a topic called commonplacing. It seems that commonplacing itself has deep roots going back hundreds of years. Um, it is a note taking method um, that I think Darwin and many other scientists uh, used. And it's really um, about documenting an idea with less emphasis on the idea um, itself, but more emphasis on what topics, what tags, what categories um, the idea is connecting to. Um, I think it is also vital to see that an idea can connect to a big idea. I think you have seen that in Jana's presentation, um, where Jana is mentioning slip box. Um, I have observed the same thing here over time where I can document one note, one idea. Um, and over time, that actually idea, um, those ideas keep uh, connecting to a larger idea, a bigger one, um, where many, many notes from different books, uh, different videos, um, they keep connecting to the same thing. So here in Airtable, one huge um, upside of Airtable I want to mention is that there is a structured database. So for one entry, you can create um, multiple connections to it um, without locking that connection's name permanently. So just do it, which is my favorite Nike uh, slogan since my early childhood. Um, it could be about Mijan's perspectives. And the key thing is, at any point in time, I can go and change the name of this category. And all of a sudden, all the connections will be uh, renamed that way. I actually started using spreadsheets early on in my documentation. And um, I do believe most of the best products can start with a spreadsheet. And if you are able to use spreadsheets and outgrow uh, the capabilities that the spreadsheet offers, that's great. You can start coding uh, yourself. Uh, you can start moving into a supercharged spreadsheet solution like Airtable or Smartsheets. Um, but what is really important is, um, I don't necessarily say Airtable is the best solution out there. And my evolution of note taking has been start with manual notes. Oh, now I need a place to tabulate my notes. Okay, I'm going to do the spreadsheet. Um, and if I actually stopped using the spreadsheet at some point, then I would have never um, upgraded to using an Airtable-based note-taking solution. Um, so I want to ensure that what you hear from me is about the note-taking principles um, that I use and not my tool of choice. Um, so let's go with the note-taking principles. Um, as I read many books um, and podcasts and read articles, um, at some point I said, hey, uh, it's either I read 25 books a year and then read, 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 and maybe I'm 
able to hold on to 1% of what I read and what I listen to over a year. So it becomes a funnel of comprehension. Read 100 pages and be able to remember, be able to commit to long-term memory 1% of them. Or I could read slower because after reading a piece of information, I would need to spend extra time um, comprehending it, reflecting on it. So instead of reading 40 books a year, I will be able to read maybe 20 books, but then my funnel of comprehension would look different. So instead of um, being able to hold on to 1% of the ideas, maybe I would be able to hold on to 5% or 10%. Again, it's really about relevancy um, for your view of the future. Um, how important do you think the relevancy of a single information, single top, single idea uh, will be for uh, your creativity? And um, I tend to be interested in many things. So I read a vast um, breed of books um, from agriculture technology uh, to management strategy to uh, coaching uh, in people management settings. Uh, to the business and economy of Turkey and similar developing nations. So um, not that I need each piece of this information uh, strategically for my day-to-day -day work, but for, for my long-term aspirations, I do believe uh, they create compounding interest if I'm able to hold on to these ideas and connect to that. So if you look at some of the things I read here, I read articles like The Surprising Power of Questions. Um, I read a blog called Farnham Street. Um, I go back to some of the decks and presentations. Uh, Stanford GSB, former Dean <clears throat> Robert Joss did more than a decade ago. Um, and I read uh, like many technologists, TechCrunch. Um, as I um, go through these sources, um, I'm able to document these sources into tags. So this is, I think, the, the beginning, not even uh, a specific idea, but if I read a piece of information, um, an article or a book, um, I am able to document it um, to a tag. So in this case, let's look at uh, source number 48. Um, it's a TechCrunch article. And I said, hey, this article is about robotics and robots, precision agriculture and agriculture technology. So uh, just at a high level, um, if at some point I decide to build an agriculture technology startup um, or I have a speech coming up um, and I want ideas to tap into to describe how um, technology will influence precision agriculture, then I'm able to get a list of items that I know have, I have reviewed before. Um, so going back to these um, items quickly enabled me to um, tap into my previous learning very quickly. But now, um, again, this is creating relationships between a piece of media and uh, topics I care about. And the next step though is, um, how do I document specific ideas? Um, and create relationships among them. Um, as I read, um, I, I highlight stuff. If I'm reading a paper book, uh, I use a highlighter. If I'm um, listening to a podcast or an audio book, I sometimes actually uh, stop. I take a quick voice recording um, on my phone if I'm, on, if I'm riding my bike so I cannot take a written note. Um, if I'm using a Kindle book, I highlight and use notes extensively. Once I do it, um, let's say in the case of uh, this book I'm reading, Alchemy, um, the surprising power of ideas that don't make sense. Um, as you see, I had quite a fruitful session of taking notes from Alch the Alchemy. Um, I hold on to an idea like Uber C or driver on a web innovation. This is incredible to me because this is uh, almost an example of cascading creativity. Um, so in this case, um, what's really important to me is uh, in early years of Uber, see your driver on a map, it was a bold, big innovation. So before Uber, we would call a cab 
and the cab driver would tell us, hey, I'll be there in 15 minutes. And you would have no idea. The next big information you would be getting from the cab is either a honk uh, down in the street or another phone call that says, hey, I'm here. And then you would just rush out of your home. Or if you don't want to annoy the taxi driver, you would go down and you would start waiting with your luggage um, at the curb. And maybe you'll stand there for five, 10 minutes. So this is so lively to me. Um, the experience that when I read in the book, it struck a chord uh, instantly. Um, so apparently what really struck a chord is the following. Um, that actually, you know, that's an innovation that Uber did, but that's actually really connecting the things in ways that weren't connected before, rather than um, complete um, from dark to enlightenment innovation. Um, the founders Flash of Insight, it's according to this book, was coming from a James Bond movie, Goldfinger. In the movie, Bond tracks or Goldfinger's Rolls Royce to his alpine layer using an animated map installed in his mark, Aston Martin. This piece is extremely relevant and important to me because first, it talks about a company that I really respect. Second, it talks about innovation. Third, it talks about innovation um, in a way that I deeply believe in, which is um, connecting the things, uh, bringing a solution from another facet of the world into any space, uh, as if you are bringing an idea from the future. Um, and fourth, I love movies. Um, I love how movies land on people um, and change their thinking. So if you look at some of the notes I take, one, um, I documented this saying, hey, this is, um, I really care about analogies, metaphors. Actually, if you ask my colleagues uh, what my biggest idiosyncrasies are at work, probably you will hear from some of them at least that I really tend to um, provide an extensive amount of analogies and metaphors in describing our vision or describing how to solve a problem uh, in front of us. So it is no wonder that um, I actually keep investing in metaphors and examples. And, and this Uber see your driver on a pep case is amazing uh, because it's an example again for a variety of um, bigger ideas that I care. Um, um, and one of those ideas is called exaptation. So borrowing from others um, or taking a feature, taking a capability and starting to use that capability uh, in a way that even the original inventor uh, didn't think about. Exaltation come, uh, comes from um, Stephen Johnson's books. Um, and those books are very much about invention and innovation. I think if I'm not mistaken, I have stumbled upon the concept of commonplacing in, in a Stephen Johnson book. So um, as I told you, why movies matter uh, to me? I am a movie geek. I have more than 1,000 ratings on IMDb. So in this case, a fascinating idiosyncrasy is that not only I love this innovation and the background story on it, but I love the fact that it was about movies um, because I really care about uh, the depictions, the innovation, the stories um, that movies actually inspire within us. So once I'm able to document this, uh, that then uh, the usefulness of this idea, uh, the potential of this idea becomes amazing. Not that I'll need this um, idea um, right after documenting it. So it seems like I documented this idea in November, 2019. So actually almost to the day, a year ago, I actually didn't need this idea the next week or the next month, but one of the projects I'm working on. So uh, at work, uh, we, are, uh, we are building um, the next gen of job seeker experience where we're gonna give more control, more visibility and transparency to a job seeker on how their job applications are going. And this see your driver on a map uh, concept is highly relevant these days when we ask about, hey, how do we reduce the psychological toll of waiting for a job seeker? Um, just like in some ways when you call a taxi cab um, and um, you don't know when the taxi cab will arrive and it's important to you because maybe you are uh, heading to the airport or you are trying to catch the train station or you have an important meeting at work that you want to be on time. 
you have no control uh, when it will arrive, but knowing when it will arrive actually gives you a lot better control. So in some ways, the analogy between um, the rider of an Uber uh, service and the job seeker, they are different. The time scales are very different. Uh, in Uber's case, we are talking about waiting for 10 minutes versus 20 minutes. In a job seeker's case, it could be waiting for a week or weeks um, before you hear back from the recruiter on your job application. So while the time scales are different, this is the amazing thing, actually. Uh, because again, the core concept for creativity is when somebody or a team invents a solution for a problem in a completely different part of the world, they almost leap into the future. Uh, for that very specific problem, it's as if they are living in the future. So um, when we read um, and when we listen and when we comprehend and when we connect the dots, uh, in a tiny instance, it could be seen as if we are able to travel to the future, learn what would work, and then come back. That's how we actually create arbitrage opportunity where one vertical might be living into the future, maybe a few minutes uh, ahead, maybe a few days or a few years ahead. But that's the beautiful thing about innovation and connecting the dots in such ways can be magical for uh, whatever work. Uh, you are working on whatever problem you are solving. I know that in my line of work, um, whether at LinkedIn and before in our um, education uh, technology startup, Scorpion, and before that in Amazon, uh, this is a topic that kept on giving. Um, it would be really unexpected if I all of a sudden fail to create value uh, out of connecting the dots um, as I read and learn and document. So um, quite a bit on Uber. I actually didn't want to single um, single pick on it. Um, there are many ideas here. And at some point, actually, I realized, oh, uh, this actually a great maybe example. At some point, um, I realized, hey, um, not that all the ideas um, are matching um, to a company but some ideas do. So um, lately, uh, for example, if you look at uh, this note, this note is a more recent note. It is from uh, late October, 2020. And that note is about uh, Nextdoor, uh, the social network uh, company built on um, real neighborhoods, real towns, cities, um, and neighborhoods. So uh, when I documented this note, and it's out of the uh, Reed Hoffman uh, podcast, Masters of Scale, and uh, this particular episode is the Empathy Flywheel. Uh, so this with Nextdoor CEO, Sarah Fryer. And uh, what I did differently is, hey, I said, hey, this is great. Not only this is a great note about, let's see which tags they are mapped to, social networks, defensibility, and again, metaphors, ex analogies, examples, and cases. And this is actually about a company. And I, in my common placing, I have another directory. Um, this is again, structured information uh, that's based on companies, companies I care about, companies I wanna track. And um, so if I go back to our common placing, um, I said, hey, why don't I start associating a note uh, with a company uh, when it is about the company? And I started this much later than the first version of my commonplacing. So going back to this live example, what uh, I didn't, but I can do now that I'm revisiting this is, hey, this is about Uber. And I took some notes, I connected the dots in, st um, in terms of tags. But what I did not do is I didn't actually associate yet this particular note with a company. So now if I click on the company and I type Uber, now that new connection is made. This is amazing because the next time I am studying Uber, um, I am able to uh, see more notes about Uber. Um, and just a quick glance, this is another thing I love about uh, having a particular note taking solution that represents your style of thinking, your style of creativity in the world. Um, 
you research one thing, but if things are properly connected or richly connected, if your ideas are richly cataloged, then um, just like your mind um, goes through a train of thought, you can actually emulate the train of thought experience in your note taking um, environment. So in this case, um, I might be starting uh, from this particular note on Uber, but when it is actually connected to companies in this way, I might click on Uber and I might realize, hey, um, Uber, I classify it as marketplaces, transportation technology, um, having post-COVID headwinds, etc. So and this reminds me, hey, uh, what is happening with other marketplace companies that I am um, tracking? And all, of, and all of a sudden, I jump to the marketplaces tag where I have 44 companies that I am tracking for the topic of marketplaces. So now I'm able to take um, a look at them and maybe seeing a particular company here, let's say like, um, oh, uh, the full list is not here by the way, if I click on here. Um, I see a particular company here, like Udemy, uh, whose founder is a person I know. Um, then I'm able to reach out to that person and say, hey, um, how is the latest, um, how is uh, COVID uh, turning out for the business, um, for the employees and friends that we are, uh, we are sharing? And so that could spark either conversations or thoughts. And this train of thinking um, really comes from the connectedness of ideas and connectedness of um, objects. At least that's how it has been working for me. But the live, going back to the live example, this is the fascinating thing I really like. I do feel like uh, most of my notes are incomplete uh, by design. Um, I don't see perfection uh, when perfection is defined as um, completeness. Um, I seek resilience and I see continuous improvement. So we just looked at an example where I am able to add uh, one more uh, association, one more connection to an idea we had. Over time, another um, improvement I did. Again, when you look at when you look at the full uh, spectrum here, the product uh, might look very advanced or like complex. I don't want to say advanced in the form of a this is an amazing product um, that I built, but advanced is in there are many features. And when you think about building your own, devising your own and not taking solution on day one, uh, this might be overwhelming. And I think you should start with the uh, minimum viable, minimum meaningful to you. And that's how I started. Uh, when I first started, um, I only started by associating sources and tags, um, not even individual notes. Then I said, hey, source, documenting sources into tags are great but maybe I should document the single ideas. And uh, that was an iteration uh, to my product. So I will talk about another iteration. Um, this is about attaching visual cues. Um, I think uh, it wasn't until January of this year that I was big on uh, visual cues. Uh, but while reading um, actually Johnny Ive's sighting, maybe a blog post about Johnny Ive, um, I stumbled upon the topic of remember the iPod shuffle. And it was really important to document the visual cue about it. Like I, I could have written about it and I wrote about it, but it is a different thing to actually document this. Um, and this is a product shot, um, but the real thing here is there is a wildly bold decision here. And that decision is, hey, we are going to take back so much control. Uh, from the user. Um, we will not give a screen to the user. And without a screen, the user will not be able to sift through playlists, will not be able to play the specific song they want to play. Um, so we are going to give up a ton of functionality. But in return, we are going to go big on smallness and simplicity. We are going to make a statement, um, we'll assume that just random playing music is sufficient. 
the boldness is amazing there. And um, there's an amazing connection to a central idea, let's say a big idea about trade-offs um, for me. Um, a trade-off is great when you, are able, when you are able to index on what you are going big on rather than when you are um, indexing what you are sacrificing. Um, in my mind, a trade-off is quite bad uh, when you are so fixated or you need to feel like you need to be fixated on what you are giving up. So when you are able to look on the positive sides, um, on what you are going bold on, big on, and um, what the upside is, then it is a great way to frame the trade-offs to yourself and it becomes, it should become easier and easier to make that kind of trade-off. So in this case, many people could criticize, uh, could look at this trade-off of iPod shuffle on giving up functionality, giving up control. Um, whereas um, visionaries like Johnny Ive can actually go the full length and be bold and say, hey, what we are going big on is the smallness and the simplicity of it. And sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. Uh, this is an amazing example of a trade-off. So going back to uh, the central reason on why we are looking at this line is I really needed at that point a, a way to document visual cues and I don't need it before. Um, so I created a new column called attach. But once I have it, then many months later, um, this central uh, topic on product manager's uh, job which uh, a great summarization of it is actually turning chaos into order. Then I found this great visual about it. And I said, hey, I will document this. And guess what? Um, right after that, again, not, to, not the day after or not the, the next week, but many months later um, in Jana's presentation, there is that opportunity. Now it's in a different setting, but um, if you remember, Jana was talking about um, how much our minds are exposed to on a daily basis to the new information um, and how chaotic uh, the processing um, of that information is on a daily basis. So this is a great opportunity to actually support with a visual where uh, you support a chaotic environment turning into order. This is uh, maybe a very simple example of connecting the dots at its best. Um, there was a document, um, there was a note taking about product managers jobs, turning chaos into order. And I had documented a visual for it, but then in a note taking session, um, that visual is used for the same concept, but used in a different vertical, not about product managers jobs, but about our brain's mission to process chaotic information and then create order, create value out of it. So as you see, I don't have that many visuals, but I don't need to have because um, this is not about completeness. Uh, this is actually about uh, resilience and continuous improvement. Um, if I look at another document um, that I edit a visual for, um, it seems like it is about um, the value of uh, college degrees. And um, I actually documented two where I am able to see um, lifetime earnings for selected majors and the slide about it if I'm not mistaken this is from um, this is from a source uh, the Hamilton project so I won't need this tomorrow um, I didn't need this actually since I documented this but uh, I will probably need this sometime in the next year as my team is also responsible for the salary and benefits uh, product uh, on LinkedIn for job seekers. So when the time comes to build the next strategy, um, we'll be able to uh, connect the dots uh, in ways that are hopefully not connected before and then create a novel value for our job seekers. Um, continuing on the same topic, maybe the last example I'm going to say, I'm going to give uh, is the following. Let's quickly jump into the tag section where you will see that from top to bottom, I have more than 300 tags. And by the way, uh, this tag shouldn't be here. It seems like it is a mistake, so it is gone. And what if we go back? Over time, I said, hey, what are the topics um, I am investing in more and more? It's as if 
what is the idea's DNA of Emrejan? And I said, hey, maybe I, I want to build a, a view into text that I can see the quote count. And this is relatively easy uh, in Airtable. This is a standard function. And if I say that I want to sort everything by that, um, and with that, I'm able to see, hey, um, over time, the things I tend to document uh, are mostly about uh, metaphors and analogies, um, coaching uh, increasingly in a people management capacity, um, product management insights and tricks and principles, uh, just overall idea of leadership, um, being able to document idiosyncratic views of notable people, of business leaders, political leaders, change agents. That is particularly important to me as I care deeply about uh, idiosyncrasies in a very positive way. Um, innovation, product design, skills-based hiring. Uh, while these were great, um, over time I realized that just looking at the note count doesn't tell the full story. Because if I established number of notes as the currency of uh, investment into an idea, then it means all the ideas are as useful or all the ideas are as important. So instead, said, hey, what if I try to come up with any way? So now, from this point on, when I'm documenting a new note, I would say, hey, what is the incisive score um, of this idea? Um, again, this is very idiosyncratic. Um, why I call it incisive, it matters less. It is like value per word approach. Um, so you might call it something different. But what I am uh, trying to emphasize here, underline here, is that all of a sudden, when I start assigning some score of re relevance or importance or in incisiveness to a piece of idea, then all of a sudden I start building a brand new facet and it is incisiveness sum. And what it tells me is of all the things that I document, now I am able to say, hey, the most, uh, what is the total value I have documented for a given tag? Um, and again, metaphors and analogies are still at the top, similar with coaching, but some of the uh, topics might be further down maybe two down that I'm interested in. For example, diversity in hiring. I really care about this. And I started caring about this more and more and more um, as the events of uh, earlier this year progressed. So now I feel like I have um, some collection on diversity in hiring touts, but if I need to be, if I feel like I need to be really creative about this, if I need to support my team to be creative and bold about diversity in hiring, I gotta do more. Um, I gotta read more, I gotta take more notes. And then with that, um, I want to increase my incessant sum. Um, there is no absolute number, hey, I need to get to 1000. But what this tells me is compared to some other topics that I have been developing myself in, such as skills-based hiring, which is another hiring-related topic. Um, I can do more in understanding diversity in hiring. And over time, um, I do believe when I collect more and I can bring diversity in hiring to the level of skills-based hiring, then I can be more creative. So this is a very idiosyncratic view, but I think this is really coming back to uh, the, the core reason I'm doing this. I'm investing in this um, mundane thing almost where uh, instead of moving on to my next book or next podcast immediately I take this not so insignificant time after finishing one piece of media um, to reflect and to document and the belief is um, it's almost taking the chaos out of creativity in some way where I say if I document enough thoughts um, and connect them for skills-based hiring, I will start being creative at some point in the future. Maybe there is a magical creativity threshold over which I start being really creative. I don't know whether that exists or if it exists, what level of incisiveness score I need to hit. Um, but at least what I can tell you is if I am passionate about a new idea, um, like diversity in hiring, then I can start investing in it 
I can evaluate whether I am as versed in diversity in hiring as I am in skills-based hiring. And I tend to believe that this fuels creativity because as we invest in note taking, as I invest in note taking and associate that note with a multitude of other ideas, and then it points into the future, I revisit them. I keep strengthening those connections and I start seeing things that were not trivial to see before. And this, is an, this has been an incredible source of um, creativity uh, for me, whether that creativity is about finding the next big idea on skills space hiring or finding the next big idea um, or finding just a little bit better way of coaching one of my product managers. Um, with that, I will stop here. I could talk a bit more about this, uh, but I better get back to my note taking and uh, document some of the notes that I have actually heard Jana speak about for the first time. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And thanks again, Jana, for giving me a chance to partner up with you and share some of the ways um, I use to document my ideas.